6,590 pound bullet 31 bunkhouse just came in here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Common floor plan, but a sharp one. It's late model, very well kept. And uh, hey, you know, you're not paying the new RV price tag for it. Those are all good qualities. So this gives you a living room super slide, a private slide out rear bunk area, full outside kitchen, direct bathroom entry door, and an 80 inch bed for those tall people like me. A lot of brands build a floor plan nearly identical to this. And they all have cool different advantages. But one of the areas where they all vary significantly is their level of travel friendliness. And I gotta say, Bullet pretty much killed it here. Because if you notice, the way that they uh, put the dinette to the rear of the slide and the sofa to the front, it lets you walk around that extended countertop and get through there. You can take a sideways travel trailer two-step and step between this. Now, you have an outside entry door to the bathroom, but you don't necessarily need it. And if you do take that sideways step, you can get to that central linen cabinet and all the storage in the bunkhouse. So... They're not the only ones to make a travel-friendly two-slide bunkhouse similar to this, but a lot of brands don't accomplish that goal. So it is one of those things that, like, if your camper is parked somewhere where you can't always access it even when it's in storage and you need to get to it without opening the slides, or frankly, it's just convenient to be able to do so, this one passes the test. Now inside here, it is shiny, clean, well-kept. The only footprint in it is my own. <laughs> I kind of feel bad about that. Now, in case you're kind of curious, you're going to look up here and be like, oh, yeah, I see. There is problems with this. No, uh, these folks were um, replacing, like, air conditioner filters, you know, when they traded this in. I mean, they, they were up to date on everything. I just didn't clip it back up there because I, I wanted to remind myself that these folks were on top of every little detail nook and cranny there really possibly could be. Now, we've got a full trifold sleeper sofa here. We'll see that open in a few minutes. You can see how we've got plenty of good breeze windows going on. I actually like how they do this table. And what's funny is it's just old school classic uh, dinette table, but it's also very, very effective. Now, the first obvious note here, those cool dinette drawers, so you don't have to, like, tear the cushions and everything apart to be able to get to that storage, but specifically the table. If you take note, You've got one folding leg over here, and a lot of people look at that style of folding leg and they just immediately gravitate toward, oh, cheap camper. While it may not be an expensive style of uh, table leg, it's also not obtrusive. You've got more room under here uh, for less of a knee-knocking situation versus like a pedestal table kind of setup. And it can still fold down into a sleeper, but it makes a lot easier come and go. You can fold it up and down simply, and because it locks against the side of the trailer, it's more stable than pedestals. You know, it doesn't have to be fancy and expensive to be really effective sometimes. Now, over here you've got a centralized sort of extra pantry, linen cabinet, clothes cabinet for the kids, whatever you want it to be. And I mean whatever you want it to be, because if you want to convert this into... Uh, an extra coat closet or bunkhouse hanging storage for the kiddos, you've got adjustable, removable shelves, and then a handy little bonus drawer. And I tell you, you can always find something to do with a drawer next to a bunkhouse because kids just eat up so much space. Anyone who bunkhouse camps with kids, or frankly, I remember my wife and I moved into our charming little starter home, and wow, we had all kinds of room in the world. And then we, uh, you know, had a kid, and <laughs> suddenly, does anyone else have that, like, ring of toys that you push all the way around the outside of your living room because the kid stuff just keeps, you know, sneaking out of their area and you they get more stuff at Christmas. And anyway, I'm rambling. You get the point. Um, full surround paneling right here and a simple but effective bathroom. You know, it, it does what it needs to do. This is more of a function room than a fashion room. This brand is a brand that has spent more money in your living areas, I, I would say, than like your bathroom area. Although, they do a nice job back here in the bunk area. We do have a sliding pocket privacy door. And as we see down below, you've got one of these uh, convertible cube futon things. And it's kind of funny because a lot of people, again, look at that and go, oh, cheap. No, effective. Because what do you want? You want a daytime sofa lounge arrangement? You got it. Do you want... Uh, sleeping space, you got it. Do you want the ability to sleep four people individually in their own bed and still have a full-size outside kitchen? Well, this is exactly how you accomplish that. But we also have the space here to convert this into more of a, a daytime lounge sofa living arrangement. What's also nice is, remember I was talking about how the kids' stuff always bleeds out of the kids' room? 
they did a pretty good job between that hallway, which could be a closet, and just all of the space here in the shelves. You got a lot of room for a lot of kid stuff in here and keep it in this room. Now, uh, you know, you're all set if you want to add some entertainment here for the kiddos, you can. It does look like the previous owners had put a flat screen in here for the uh, the occupants in the back. And that was one of their reasons on going to a toy hauler is because it can be a very effective alternative bunkhouse while giving you the ability to bring some widgets with you. But you notice what they did here. Um, originally, this was effectively what I just call a ladder wall. Uh, where, you know, each of these, what looks like a shelf now, was originally just a rung of a ladder. But if you notice, previous owners added some uh, 3 8 wood decking in here to convert that into additional shelf space below what I like to call the big kid bunk. Because that is a little bit wider bunk than you normally find. Like, it, this is wider than the bunk that's actually in the slide out. It gives you, uh, you know, more sleeping room for a bigger kid because they can kind of like crosswise on something like that. Um, but... We're not really, I, I kind of gave you half the living room. Let's let's dig into the, uh, uh, you know, other aspects of what the living room has to offer. Now, a couple things to draw your attention to here. Uh, you can see how the TV obviously pivots out. So if you are sitting in the slide, it's not going to be what I like to call that neck wrecker entertainment. You know, it's a lot, lot easier to see. And then when you're traveling, the TV just kind of folds out of the way. But you notice where it's really handy is if you have extra guests or if... Uh, let's say you've got a couple busybody kids and they need some entertainment to help slow them down and get their bodies slowed down so they can crash. Or if the kids bring friends. Or another thing this could be handy for, sometimes I've talked to couples that have uh, one of the other, uh, you know, two people might have like sleep apnea and a snoring issue. Well, this is kind of a nice way to give them their own separate sort of sleeping quarters and uh, have a, a privacy wall in between them because that is an adult size tight bed and you can see that there are sliding privacy doors for the bedroom just like there's a sliding privacy door for the bunkhouse. Now down below that you have uh, you know your uh, Bluetooth DVD stereo pretty common fare but what's nice here is uh, you've got this eight cubic foot fridge freezer in the in the kitchen area and plenty of storage because if you're gonna sleep all these people you gotta feed them too right? Now, kind of like we saw in the hallway, these shelves in this big, like, floor-to-ceiling linen or uh, pantry here, they can be uh, adjusted. So if you need tall storage space, small storage space, you can kind of convert it into whatever you like, although the three bottom shelves are going to be fixed. This does have an eight-cubic-foot fridge freezer, uh, and uh, that gives you, you know, the extra... Food space. Now that in conjunction with the outside refrigerator, this thing has just shy of 12 cubic foot of uh, cold storage. It's actually something like 11.7 cubic feet of cold storage. Pretty darn good. Um, our cabinetry is pocket screwed. Uh, ball bearing plywood box drawers. And you can see a big stainless sink right there at that high rise faucet. And nice little wastebasket space. That's one of those things I always look for. Drives me crazy when uh, there, there's just not even a space for a jacket or a wastebasket in a camper. And I know that sometimes due to space restrictions, it's not always possible. But I don't know. I like to try to find a way to do it. And apparently so do these guys. Now up here in the bedroom, remember, we've got those sliding privacy doors. The first thing I want to mention, because when people see the bed come right up next to the uh, entertainment wall like this, sometimes like, ah, oh, crap. Well, this is a longer 60 by 80 residential queen bed. It's not one of those short camp queens. So your feet shouldn't be kicking that wall all night. Those fully mirrored wardrobes will help reflect a lot of light around in here. But speaking of which, you have a switch for those overhead lights, plus you have individual reading lights right there, and you can reach the overhead light switch from the bed position. You might notice that extra switch in there. That's for these lights. So you don't have to be tall. You don't have to go through and click a bunch of different lights. And I love that huge bedroom window right there. And if you take a peek below it, you see that lighter color countertop on that bedside stand? It's actually a handy little laundry chute so that if you want to leave a laundry basket down there, you have an easy place to put yesterday's clothes to keep them out of your way today. Very similarly well kept outside. Skin, gleams, decals, great shape. Can't find any problems with anything anywhere really. Full uh, nose cap that's fully automotive painted and this does have of course power awning with LED lighting as actually I think we'll probably see later. Maybe I'll pop that open and power tongue jack. Now previous owners put a couple small but nice upgrades on this like they put the one of those really nice ball bearing leveling glides or uh, guides right on the nose rather. And they also put on slide awnings on this thing. And they those things, they can run a pretty penny pretty quickly. So they definitely spent some money intending to keep this thing longer. Again, they just 
saw where we had a late model barely used toy hauler and said man we just we can't pass up that opportunity now this is built with hyper weight sensitivity in mind like its passport sister that we keep here uh, where it's got a, a lighter weight frame and all aluminum uh, skeletal structure but a couple little neat things the previous owners put on here they actually had wired through the battery box a disconnect switch so that the battery wouldn't be dead when they were done with it and then you can see a little paddle switch on the right side of that battery box that's wired to the running lights so that uh, if they want to flip on the lights, uh, you know, like all your marker and clearance lights and stuff like that, to uh, make this thing, you know, just kind of look neat and stand out when you get to your campsite. You know, they wanted an easier way to do that. Uh, a simple way is to just take a simple um, blade fuse and jump it off your seven-way plug, but now they don't have to do that. This does have an enclosed and heated belly with a 30,000 BTU furnace, which will give this thing good extended season functionality. What that means, guys, extended season, if it dips below freezing overnight, you'll be okay. Uh, if it's going to hard, hard freeze or hit zero degrees, you probably want to get it winterized. Quick note, you can see all the windows are frameless, and they also have a huge bedroom window. It makes that bedroom look and feel much, much bigger and a lot less claustrophobic. We have wide stance stability axles because this thing is fairly long um now it's well within the weight of half ton capacity but it's long enough that some uh like short box shorter wheelbase half tons could theoretically struggle with it and that's where those spread axles come in they help you cheat the wheelbase and they help eliminate sway and wiggle and enhance stability to give you a better smoother towing experience now you, this is uh we already saw inside how the ceiling's vaulted but you can see how it's exaggerated even more outside one of the things i like about that is the like the the, the snow load bearing nature of something like that the uh, full outside kitchen here still includes the original grill that came with the factory. It gets mounted on the bumper here. It can actually swing out to be next to the outside kitchen for a little simpler, easy use and operation. But like I said, we're going to pop that awning open. Let's take care of that and do that right now. Now there's a couple different ways to do an outside kitchen. We already talked about the bumper grill. But what I mean is full size or uh, low profile. Uh, a low profile, like you'd find on a lot of our passports here, will give you an extra bunk inside. This one they went with full size, and what's kind of neat about that is it gives you a bigger refrigerator, and it gives you the opportunity to do things like actually include a real sink with a real drain. And the whole camper's winterized right now. That's why that little panel in front of the sink has been dropped down. You can see the galvanized rolled steel counter here. Now you've got a grill on the back, you could say for your main course. Then you've got a uh, stove top over here on the side for the sides, effectively. Another neat thing with a full size uh, outside kitchen is that the outside kitchen door itself, in a way, just kind of acts as sort of a awning extension. Not not like a full awning, obviously, but it gives you a place to be able to stand there, grab a drink, get out of the sun for a minute. We've also got a direct entry bathroom door right here. Uh, of course, you know, foot flush stool to make life easy for everybody. Keep your face away from your business. But this also helps eliminate foot traffic through the RV greatly. Having a toilet here and a refrigerator right there. The two primary reasons people track dirt in and out of the RV. They're now both located, effectively, outside. But, as I mentioned, deadbolt door. Uh, you know, no one's going to <laughs> walk through the door and surprise you. And it seems odd that our black tank flushes over here, but that's because this is where the black tank's located, because that's where the toilet's located. So this is the most direct path for that to give you the most uh, uh, output and function. Uh, easy tilt awning. <laughs> Doesn't get much easier than that. So if you do want to crank the awning down on a drizzly day, uh, you know, you can get some good rain runoff here. And what's cool is it's self-correcting. So you hit the button, it'll go ahead and uh, flatten itself back out, basically. Here's a better look at those wide stance axles. A lot of folks are familiar with these now, but I understand that not everybody watching our RV videos here at Halet RV is a seasoned veteran at this stuff, so sometimes I like to make sure that we cover a little bit of the basics, too. Uh, Full-length LED lighting. Handy little thing there to... Oh, oh, they added some extra stabilizers in the middle. I just became aware of that. That is actually really handy. A lot of people don't realize it's a very simple, inexpensive, and storage-free way of adding a lot of enhanced stability to your RV. Um, what I mean by storage free is like you can get wheel chocks and X chocks and every other thing in the world, but then you have to eat up some of your pass-through storage capacity here. And now we don't have that problem here because they just put a simple set of inexpensive extra jacks in the middle. You take your power drill with the hex nut adapter, hook it onto that thing, and you're good to go. Now you can see we've also got magnet holdbacks and slam latch, uh, latches on those full-size pass-through doors. So getting in and out of those things is easy. And I don't know if you caught, I didn't mention it, when I was up here by the battery, they added a sheet of diamond plate under the battery tray and effectively built their own 
cargo tray out of it. It's uh, that was another. They they did several very inexpensive, very sleek, smart things to enhance the RV without like doing any sort of hillbilly detrimental jury rig into it. They only enhanced this thing, which is nice. Again, they had intentions of keeping this a lot longer, so they invested some money into it that you folks are going to take advantage of. Good news is now you just get a used RV price tag on something that has more equipment than when it was brand new. And it's late model, might even still get same as new financing. Pretty cool. So with that, guys, give us a call. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.